everybody. We're on holding the Abdalit Omid Aleph, right on top. The Gemara has been going through. We went, we finished with the idea that the word R is nighttime. Everybody agrees. And then we got into the point of speaking refined and careful speech. And that we're continuing along that line. The Gemara starts off as follows. Rav bar de Rav ubar agate. Rav, the son of Rav Chia's brother and the son of Rav Chia's sister. What happened here? Rav Chia's father had a son from a first marriage and Rav Chia's mother had a daughter from a first marriage. When Rav Chia's father married for the second time to Rav Chia's mother, they each brought in a, a the, what the, 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 the uh, Rav Chia brought in a son and Rav, and the, the, the mother brought in a daughter. The two of them, whose names were Ivu and Ima, married each other and proceeded to have Rav Chia. And they proceeded to have Rav. So therefore, Rav was the son of Rav Chia's half-brother Ivo from the father's side and Rav Chia's half-sister Ima from the mother's side. That's have to be what it says over here, because the brother, because the the two children were not actually related, were not actually related in any which way. Rav Bar Achva, the 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 Rav Chia, Rav, the son of the brother of Rav Chia, Uvar Ach and also the son of the sister of Rav Chia, Kisolik Lahasim. When Rav went back up from Babylon, Babylonia to Eretz Yisrael, Amale Rav Chia asked him. Avihu Kayim, Kayim, is Ivo Kayim, is, is he alive? Amale, so Rav didn't answer him straight that unfortunately Ivo was not alive. He said, Amo Kayimos, Kayemes, is Amos alive? Is, a, is my mother alive? So, Amale, so Rav Chia asked, okay, Imo Kayemes, is Imo alive? Amale, Rav answered him, Abu Kayim is Abu Kayim. Good morning, Jeff. And Abu Kayim is from the from the way that Rav answered by not saying that any one of them passed away, but by keeping continuing to push off the question by keeping to say, "Is Abu alive? Is Ima alive?" Rav Chia understood, therefore, that his half brother and sister. Was no was were no longer alive. He went ahead and he said to his attendant, "Take off my shoes, because I'm now an avel." But at the same time, take my clothing after me to the bathhouse. From here, we learn out three things. We actually learn out four things. Firstly, the way to speak. Refinely, which is do not give over bad news. Talk about not bad news from the side, but also from Rav Chia's response, which was take off my shoes, but at the other hand, carry my clothes to the bathhouse. Shmami no talas, shmami no oval also benilas sandal. That an oval is not is forbidden to wear shoes. And this is where our minhag comes from taking off shoes when we become an ovel. From here we learn that if somebody is an ovel, but he does not get the news that he is an ovel, he gets the news 30 days, 30 days, 30 days late, more than 30 days later, then he only has to sit Avelus for one day. By this that he said, take off my shoes, but prepare to put on my clothing, it tells us he only has to sit for one day. Part of a day is a full day. In other words, that if somebody gets the news that somebody, a close family member passed away and he gets the news more than 30 days later, he has to sit Avelus. He sits Avelus for only one hour. From the words that he said, take off my shoes, 
but at the same time, take my clothing, meaning I could put back on my regular clothing and go back and bathe, is within an hour. And in fact, this is the halacha lamaisa. I happen to know of a case where somebody passed away and the news did not get to the person until well after 30 days. And the halacha was exactly that. They sat for, they sat shiva for exactly one hour and then picked themselves up. A little further, again, the Gemara just has a couple of more cases of how much you can learn from a person's speech. It was this person who walked around always saying, judge my case in court. Rashi explains, anything that had to do with business, that he had an argument with a partner, kept saying, let's go to court. And he refused to work it out outside of court. LLP dying only by the words of a judge. So the Gemara says, Amri Kasi. It must be from his speech that he keeps saying, Dunu Dini, take my case to court, that he comes from Shevet Don. Dixiv Don Yodin Amoi Ka'achat Shifte Yisro. Don will judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. There was another case. There was a man who walked around saying, I, by the sea, I will establish my mansion. But they searched him. They wanted to see, is this guy nuts? What's he walking around talking about the sea, mansions? They didn't know about Boca Raton in Southern Florida, South Florida. But they discovered that he came from the the Shevet of Zebulun, the tribe of Zebulun, the Ksiv by Zebulun, Zebulun lach lechoif yamin yishkoi. Zebulun shall dwell by the seashores. So now we go ahead and we finish the esoteric part of the Gemara that we've been talking about. We now roll back to what we began the Mesechta. We finally came to the conclusion that R, the word R that our, that our Mesechta started with, means night according to everybody, which means that you do bedikas chomet, the night of the 14th of Nisa. So now the Gemara is going to start breaking down the particulars of why do we do it at night and why don't we do it by day? And when should we be doing it? All based upon the various psukim in the Torah. The psukim, when you look at each one individually, seem not to be so clear as with its instructions. Zak the Gemara. Vahashta, and now, the Kaimalon, the Kula Alma, or or do, everybody agrees that the word or means night. Mechti, let's see. Bain the Rabbi Yehuda, Bain the Rameyer. We're going to bang into both Rabbi Yehuda and Rameyer shortly that talk about everybody, they all say that, of course, we stop eating chametz midya raisa from Erev Pesach at 12 o'clock midday. But they, they have an argument as to when midra rabbinically, do we actually stop eating chametz. But the Gemara says over here, Bein the Rabbi Yehuda, Bein the Rameyer, chametz enoy oser, chametz does not become oser on Erev Pesach, elam lishay shoyis ulamala. Only from the sixth hours and, and onwards, meaning from midday and onwards. In other words, from when we start, the time arrives to bring the Pesach sacrifice, the carbon Pesach. That is when the Isr Chomets begins, Min HaToyra, from the Toyra. Now, so Frank the Gemara, if the Isr of eating Chomets starts, everybody agrees, Min HaToyra, from midday of Ere Pesach. Nidvoik Bishes, then let's do Bedikas Chomets right then and there at the end of the fifth hour, at the beginning of the sixth hour, because that is when the whole Isser of Chomets, the, pro, the prohibition of eating Chomets begins. So says the Gemara. If you want to say the reason that we move it, we moved it forward all the way to the previous night to do Bedikas Chomets, the search for the 10 pieces, 
the chi tema zerizin makdim in lemitzvahs. We have a rule that the zealous zerizin try to do the mitzvahs as early as possible. Zerizin makdim in lemitzvahs. Then, if that's the case, nidwaik mitzafra. Then we should do the search for the chametz in the morning, not at the night, the previous night, but at daybreak in the morning when it gets light. That's when we should do it. Dixiv. Because we have a passage that says that regarding bris milo, and this is something to point out right here. Throughout this mesechta, we are going to compare circumcision bris milo to the carbon pesach, because uniquely they are the only two milo and pesach are the only two mitzvahs asays positive commandments that if you do not do them, you chayiv krisus. Yechayiv to be cut off. Every other mitzvah in the Torah that has a chayiv krisus, that is mechuyiv, that if you do not do it, you get you get the the punishment is being cut off. Are all chayiv lavim, all negative commandments. The only two positive commandments that are, if you do not do them, are chayiv krisus. Are, are what he called the punishment is exorcision, meaning to be cut off is only Mila and Pesach. So therefore they have a similarity and the Gemara constantly compares one to the other. So over here it says, Diksiv, Ubayoy Yimo Basara And on the eighth day, you should do the circumcision. Vitania, and there was, and the Brysa learns, Kol Hayoyim Kula Koshal Mila. The whole day is kosher to do Mila. The entire eighth day, you can do the Bris Mila. Ella, what? Says the reason Magdim in the mitzvahs that the zealous try to do the mitzvahs as quickly as possible. Shenema, because it says by the by the Akedas Yitzchak, by the binding of Yitzchak, by Yashkem Avram Babayka. Avram got up early in the morning. But what do you see? The reason Magdim in the mitzvahs means that on the day that you should be doing it, do it as early as possible in the day. In that case, therefore, since the Yitzhar of Chometz starts on the daytime of Erev Pesach, Minat Torah, at 12 o'clock midday, let us search for the Chometz on that day, first thing in the morning. Why do we roll it all the way back to the nighttime? Says the Gemara, on the Ram Nachman by Yitzchak, V'shosh v'nei adem mitzuyim b'vatzeyem, in the hour that people are found in their houses, i.e. when they come home from work at the end of the day, and also and the light of the nair, which you're supposed to search by the by the light of the fl- of the flame, of the candle flame is obviously much better at night. Obviously, it illuminates much better at night. A very basic question. In truth, we should be searching in the morning. But the facts are, because people are found in their homes in the evenings, and the light works better at night, therefore we do the Badika at night, the night before of the 14th. Amar Abayim, Hilkoch, therefore, Hait Suruba Meder these young Torah scholars, but here it really means not just young scholars, it means everybody who sits and learns, Loy Lefateach, the idno the urta to telesa the nage of arvesa. Do not start learning, start dwelling in learning late in the afternoon of the thirteenth, leading into yudalat nisan, leading into the fourteenth. Dilma mishra mashchale shemate. Maybe you'll get so involved in your learning, va'osilim nune mi mitzvah, and you're going to forget to go ahead and to do the Bidika. The truth is that this Gemara is very hard to understand because learning is the mitzvah of Yigisa Boy Yoyma Velayla. It is the mitzvah Timidis, the mitzvah that is always Midi to sit and learn. As we're about to learn, Bidika's Chometz is only Midi Rabbanon. So the Gemara is actually telling us, don't do the diaraisa of learning because you might push off the mitzvah dirabonon. 
that is a very hard concept to grasp. And the truth of the matter is that it, it, it's a schwer question. It's a hard question. And we're going to get into a more hard question in a minute. So we'll, we're going to come back. We're going to roll back to this question a little further on the Amit. They asked the Reb Nachman by Yitzchak. A business question. If a landlord rents a house to, a, to his friend on the 14th, on whose responsibility is it to do the search for the chametz? Is it on the landlord to do the search? Because the chametz that's in this apartment is his. Since he just rented it out on the 14th, obviously any chametz that's going to be found in the apartment is not the renters. It's in fact who's the landlord. So it's his responsibility to do it. I, Dilma, no. It's on the tenant to search. Why? The Isura Because the Isser, the Chomets, is found now in his dwelling. This has great ramifications. Because what we're saying here is that the renter, by dint of renting the apartment, is considered the owner of the apartment. This has great ramifications in Allahha. Later on, when we learn, when we get into the monetary mesechtis, this is going to come up because even though the landlord is paying the mortgage, as it were, and owns the land upon which this apartment, and he's really the real owner, nonetheless, the tenants has, by giving the rent, gets the rights of an owner. So the question over here is, well, on the 14th, do we say, do we go after the chametz, which obviously belongs to the landlord and the landlord is responsible to search? Or does it go after the one who has the rights of ownership and that therefore would be the renter and it's found in his property and he has to get rid of it? So the Gemara is asked like this, right? Toshma. So another Baraisa. Hamaski bayis lechaveroi. If somebody goes ahead and rents a house to his chaver, the responsibility of putting up the mezuzah is on the renter. So the Gemara is, simply, is saying, just like the mezuzah, which is a mitzvah min atayra, it's not the landlord's responsibility to put up the mezuzah. It's the renter's responsibility to put up the mezuzah because he essentially is now the owner of the rights of this property. So therefore, the same thing should be by Chomet that he should go ahead and go ahead and he does, the renter should be responsible for doing the search. So the Gemara, no. Hossam over there by mezuzah. Ha'amara mesharshia. Mezuzah chayves hadarhu. The mezuzah is the chayv of love because Rashi explains one, two, three, four lines into the wide lines on the bottom. Chayv lefi shuhu mishmartai because the mezuzah is his mishmeris, is his watcher, as it were. He's putting Hashem on the door and Hashem is his watcher. It says, al mezuzah is in your home. And the Gemara explains, in the entrance of where you go in and out. But over here, is only a dirabonon. It is not a biblical command like, like mezuzah. It's in fact only dirabonon. If it's only because of the love of you shall not see and you shall not find the chametz which says later on on Amid Beis that we're going to get to it a little later it works by itself you don't have to search for chametz it's enough to say all leavened bread that I find in my house I am mevatel I do away with it I make it hefker it belongs not to me anymore and bitl is in the heart. You can actually do without words. As Rashi says, I make it like dirt. 
all leavened bread that I find in my house is gone. It's like, it's like the dirt. The Rabbanon, and it was only the Rabbanon who the Otsuch Bedika. It is only the Rabbanon who said we should do a search of the 10 pieces. Since over here you have to put in, a, it's a tircha, you have to put in the work to search. Right? The question is, on who does it belong? So here's the point. You know that you cannot compare it to mezuzah. Mezuzah is a mitzvah dioy raisa. It's a mitzvah minatayra. It is your shmirah. So of course it goes on the renter who's getting the shmirah and it's his home now. But the vidika is only a dirabonon. It's only a dirabonon. So therefore, if it's only a dirabonon, does he have the responsibility of having to do the search or no? So, so therefore, we're back to our question by a renter who's responsible for searching for the chavetz. Tanino, we learned it in another baraisa. If somebody rented a house to his chava, im ad shaloi mosaloi mi maftechois chal arba also, if when the 14th arrived, the keys to the apartment were still not given over. Then it's still on the landlord's responsibility to search. But if he did give over the keys to the renter and then the 14th arrived, it's on the renter to search. Frank the Gemara. So they asked of Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, if somebody rented an apartment to his Chava on the 14th, do it's, now it's the 14th in the morning. So do we say, we are going, we have the right to assume it is a given, it's a chazaka, it's an assumption that the landlord did do the bedika the night before. And so the renter, having now rented it this morning, does not have to do another bedika. Or I ain't chazkasai baduk. Or no, there, there is not a chazaka that it was baduk. And in other words, that you cannot assume, even though you rented it now, Erev Pesach in the morning, let's say you came into Boca Raton, you're here for Pesach and you came in in the morning, can you rely that the land, you cannot rely on the landlord, that the landlord went ahead and was by the kid and did the search the night before. Frey to Gemara, what's the question? Lamai naf kibido, lishi liha, go ahead and ask the landlord, ask him straight up. Did you go ahead and do the search? Zabdi Gemara, no. We cannot find the landlord. The landlord flew off to New York for Pesach. And we can't find them. So the question is now, So does the renter now have the responsibility to search or not? Do we say no? Chazoko lived like it's in a good assumption that it was, it was, it was searched the night before. Or no, you cannot rely on the search. The problem with this question, and this is a lumbish question, which we're not going to get bogged down in, is that we just finished saying that Bidika is only a dirabonon. We all know there's a rule, Suffolk dirabonon lekula. Any uncertainty on a rabbinical law goes with a leniency. It is only on a diaraisa, suffix diaraisa lechumra. Any uncertainty on a biblical law that we go the hard law, we take the hard position. But any rabbinical law, a suffix dirabonon, an uncertainty in a, in a rabbinical law, we go lekula. Is if that's the case, then what's the question? Of course, we should be able to say, um, since Bedikas Chametz is only a Dirabanon, we should be able to automatically rely on the fact that the landlord, we can assume that the landlord did the search. And this really goes back to our question before as well. 
So I actually heard from a friend of mine real quick, from a friend of mine, Shlomo Perlstein, who we did the Dafyomi back in New York, that he answered, it's true. Except what's the whole reason of Bedika? The whole reason why they established Bedika is to protect the terrible lavim of Baal Yeroy, Baal Yemotza, that you shall not see chametz and you shall not find chametz. That is its whole reason. Since that is its whole purpose, it is considered like an avak, like the dirt of the mitzvah. Very similar to Lashon Haro. The Chafetz Chaim brings cases where it's not actually Lashon Haro, but it's avak Lashon Haro. It's the dirt of Lashon Haro. It's things. So we can argue over here, since the whole purpose of the Badika is completely unnecessary, as Rashi said before, the bitul sagi, the truth of the matter is it just works if I simply say in my heart, I give it away like the dirt of the earth, kol chamira v'chamira, and I don't have to do any search. The whole purpose of the search is to protect us from bal yiroa, bal yamatsi, you shall not see, you shall not, shall not find, and you shall not see. Therefore, it is already sort of has the smell of a diaraisa. Since it's the smell of diaraisa with two terrible lavim involved, therefore we can say that you cannot simply fall into any more suffix the rabbon of Lakula. It is not your simple case of an uncertainty only in a rabbinical din. Because here the rabbinical din is so tied up with the biblical law. But the truth of the matter is, the question is better than the answer. And this is where in yeshiva you get stuck for three weeks. So Rav Nachman said, Tinisu, we learned in a b'risa. Hakol nemonim al bir chametz. Everyone is trusted on the removal, on the disposal of chametz. Afilu noshim, afilu avodim, afilu kitanim. Even noshim, avodim, and kitanim. Even though, when it comes to witnesses, none of these three are actually legal witnesses in courts. In court. The phrase Gemara, my time of If that's the case, why are they trusted? The top of the Avdalit on the base, the top of 4B. So the reason why they're really trusted is not because of their words, because the Chizka Obadik, because we, we, we're entitled to make the assumption that the house was searched. Because we hold hakol chaverim. Everybody is considered like a chover heim eitzel b'dikas chametz. A chover is somebody that is that is zealous and careful on all mitzvahs as we're about to see. And we argue, and the Gemara says when it comes to b'dikas chametz, even the most simpleton even the ones who are not that up to date in the law, everybody does the search for the ten pieces of covets. It's a Jewish tradition that is that is sacrosanct by everybody. Titania, let me tell you about a cover. Chover shemes, a cover that passes away. The Aniach Miguro Malaya Paris, and he left over a storehouse full of fruit, of produce. Afilu hang even if the the produce was delivered that very day. It's in a presumptive state of being okay that the chover must have immediately take, given truma to the koyin and the maise to the levy. He tight. Since you can't use produce until they're tight, that the portion that goes to the koyin and the portion that goes to the levy has to be separated first. We could assume that a chover automatically did, even on the day that he passed away. So we're saying when it comes to Bedikas Chomets, everybody is Bechazoka, everybody is Bechazoka with a presumptive that everybody does Bedika. So Frank, the Gemara, that, that no, maybe not. Umimai. Dilma, the reason why in this case we could assume that the house was searched. Because these three people, the women, the slaves, the servants, the children, were there to, to say, we saw that the house was searched. Says the Gemara, but these statements, does it have any substance? 
mashmoy is any substance, they are not legitimate witnesses. Says the Gemara, Elamai, the So, what are you telling me? That you want to tell me now, this is what we're arguing, that there's a presumption state that the house was searched. But if that's the case, then the words of the Brysa are not clear. The Brysa says the words, Hi, ha kol nemonim. They are believed, which means that they're talking about the people. Which people? The Noshim, the women, the Avodim, the servants, the Katanim, the children. If you're telling me that we're not truly relying on their testimony, it's a global thing that the house has the right to have an assumption of being searched. The right word should have been Kol Habotim, all houses. It should have said all houses are presumed to have been searched. By using the words, you're talking now in the people. And which people were the price talking about? Women, servants, and children. So says the Gemara, El Amai Mishum Amira Tahani. So now you're telling me from the Bryce's words that the Bryce is coming to tell us that we do rely on the testimony of the women, servants, and children. Which means that if they did not testify, Haloi Amrin Hani Loi. That means if they didn't testify, then Enochanami Tishpoi Binei Dein Chiskoi Bodo. That there would be no assumption that the house was searched from the Baraisa's words that Hakol Nemonim all are believed and the all that they're talking about are the people of the the women, children, and the servants. It means that if they didn't testify, there would be no assumption of belief, which would mean that houses do not have a assumption belief, which means that therefore you can't say. Hakol chaverim that all are considered like a chaver eitzel b'dikas chametz. So the Gemara says loy. No, la'ila me'malach cheskot seibodik. The truth is, houses are considered. There's a presumption that they were searched because everybody does the search. Aye, the Brisa uses the word hakol nemonim, which seems to be talking about the people. That it's tied to the people testifying to it. We have reason to presume that the landlord did not search this house because he had to run off to New York to get back to New York for Pesach. So we assume that he jumped on a plane. He got the last plane out. It was during COVID. There weren't as many planes flying. So therefore, he had to grab the last plane out of the thing. So the moment you're dead, it's fine. He locked the door and he ran to the airport. Vamri. Hani bad kine, and these people, the women, the children, the servants, they say, We what it called, we search the house. They're not they're saying more than that, that the house was searched, but that we ourselves went into the house and searched the house. Mahu the same I would have said, Loi Mahani Rabbon, the Rabbon do not believe them because they are not legal witnesses. Kamash Malon, the Bryce is coming to inform us. Chib and the Bedika. Bedika has chametz midra bonanu. Since Bedika has chametz, the search for chametz is only rabbinic in nature. The media rice, like we said before, kibitl baal masagile, mere nullification is significant, is sufficient, which as Rashi and Tysus and everybody explains. The truth is, you don't even have to say the words of Kol Chamiro Bechamiro De Ikabishusi. If you say it in your heart, Bittel is belayed. And you know how you know it? Because the mitzvah is Bittel to nullify. But the bracha that we make by Bedikas Chametz is Albir Chametz, on the disposal of Chametz. But that's not really the mitzvah. The mitzvah is what? To nullify the Chametz. But because it only is in your heart, since you can, a bracha has to be clear on what the blessing is going on. Let's say when you make a bracha shahakol yebedvaroi, the cup of 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 soda, the cup of water has to be there. When you're eating a piece of cake, you have to have the cake in front of you to make the bracha, because you have to know on what the bracha is going on. Otherwise, it's known as an orphan bracha. Since bittel. 
nullification is in the heart. Obviously, the, uh, a person looking, another person looking at this cannot see what's taking place in your heart. Therefore, the blessing that we make is not on the actual mitzvah of bittel. It's in fact on beer chametz. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> so this would be the reason why we should take uh, a. Whoop! You broke up. We lost the uh, we lost the feed. Is anybody else there? I'm frozen over here. Is anybody? No, you're not else? frozen. I'm not frozen. Okay. No, it's Simeon. Simeon's okay. frozen. All right. No problem. Bro Maybe it's the brachal of Atola. Right. So the Beis Yosef talks about this in the Shulchan Aruch, what I just told you before. And real quickly, I don't want to get into the whole uh, the the whole thing here because we'll get bogged down. But he says like this: because brachas are different, because when the word of beer chametz. We translate it always burning the chametz. The truth is, bircha means disposal of the chametz. Since disposal of the chametz is part and parcel of bal yiroya bal yimotze, it's part of you shall not see, you shall not find. Therefore, it's not a bracha levatola. It's almost its own separate thing. But in fact, you are correct in saying what you just said. It is a whole discussion in halathic in the Shilas and Chubas, in the question and answers, it is there to think, what exactly are we doing between Bedika and the blessings that we're making? You put your finger on a very, uh, what do you call it, as they would say in Yeshiva, a lamdusha, a lamdusha, a very in-depth conversation about what are brachas, how do they hinge, what does this mean that you have to know what the bracha is going on, and so on and so forth. All right, but I don't want to get stuck into it now because then we'll be stuck right here and we'll be here for three weeks. Okay, so the Gemara says to me, Arisa bitul ba'alma sagila because biblically nullification works. So the rabbi said, We believe the women, servants, and children with guarding a rabbonon. So, in other words, the truth of the matter is, houses are automatically considered. We have an assumption that they were. Search, but in this case, we have an assumption that the guy flew off to New York and didn't have time, and the and therefore they came along and said we did the search and they're believed. A person goes ahead, a landlord rents a house to his chaver on the chazok, and he tells him, "Yeah, don't worry about it. It's, it's what he call it. It gives the the impression that the house was searched." But in the end of the day, and he discovers that it was not searched. Mahu, what's the din? Can he say that it was a mekach toyis? A mekach toyis is a mistaken transaction or not? And in a mistaken transaction, the person could back out of the deal. He said, listen, I rented it on the assumption that you checked the house. That assumption is not holding up. Zakti Gamoro Toshma Gomarabayo Loy me boy don't say it's it's a given Baasra in the neighborhood the loy havri agro water we didn't hire people to do our searches. We ourselves do the search for the comments like we all do today, right? It's a given to Nihalele in Chile Kaimi Mitsubikufe. It's axiomatic to use the word that the art scroll uses that a person is pleased to do a mitzvah with his own body. A person wants to do a mitzvah, the gabro, he wants to feel great about himself, that he's doing the commandments of God. But even in a place where they do hire, where they do hire people to do the bedika, a person is still pleased to do the mitzvah with his money. A person will say, it's true somebody else is doing it, but I feel okay in going ahead and hiring somebody and doing the thing. So therefore, the renter cannot back out. The problem with this again, and we're not going to get bogged down, it's very nice that the renter is okay. It's the nichale. It's okay with him to do a mitzvah with his money. That's fine, but that's between ben Odom La'atzvay. That's between him, him and himself. The business deal was ben Odom L'chaveroi. was between him and the landlord. That's a different thing entirely. That was a legal contract between the two of them. 
with the assumption that the house was searched. So even if he himself to himself, then Adam La'atzmai, between himself, between him and himself, is okay with it, it still doesn't change the fact that between him and his fellow, the business deal, what the, the small print and the business deal were not followed. So what exactly is this Gemara saying? And again, it's one of those questions that is, that uh, the Mepharshim, obviously, the, the expression that I'm go into exactly what it, way, how, what are the depths of a mistaken transaction and the ability to back out of a transaction. Tanan Hossam. Okay. Now, I'm just beginning this Gemara. We may begin again from here tomorrow, only because now the Gemara is going to start going into the various sukkim, how they're a bit unclear. Once again, I'm reminded, Minat Torah, on Erev Pesach, we stop eating chametz from midday on, from when you could bring the carbon Pesach. Tanan Hosa, Rameyer Oimer, Oichlin Kol Chamesh, Midrabbanon, you could eat chametz the entire fifth hour, hour, Vesarfin B'dechila Sesh, and then you burn the leftover chametz at the beginning of the sixth hour. Rabbi Yehuda Oimer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Oichlin Kol Arba, you could eat chametz on the fourth hour. This is the way we hold, by the way. V'toylin kol chamesh. And then you leave it hanging. You cannot eat the chametz, but you don't have to destroy the chametz during the fifth hour, which means that you're allowed to feed it still to your behemoths, to your animals. You can give your animals to eat from the chametz. You can still have, in the Lashon of Gemara, hano pleasure from it, meaning giving the food to your animals is a pleasure. And you must burn it at the beginning of the sixth hour. As we said before in Amun Aleph, the Kula Alma Mia Chomets Mishe Shoyes Lamalo Ulcer. Everybody agrees that Mina Torah, biblically speaking, from the sixth hour and on, you cannot eat Chomets on Ere Pesach. Minolon, how do we know this? Pesach doesn't start for another six hours. Where do we see Mina Torah that? Where do we see in Torah that it starts are uh, really on Erev Pesach? Amar Abay, Trey Kroy Ksivi. The Torah brings two psukim. Ksiv, the first psuk is found, and this is again in Perik Yud Bey's Posik, Posik uh, Yud Test, the 19th Posik. It's all in the same place, all of these psukim, in the 12th Perik, in Parshish Boy. Ksiv, Shivas Yomim. For a seven-day period, leave in bread, chametz, right? Sa'ar means bread that rose, okay? Which obviously matzah is also, but matzah does not rise. So leaven means something that rose. For seven-day period, chametz shall not be found in your homes, which means that chametz cannot be found even for one moment on Pesach. The moment Pesach comes in, the siren sounds, right? It is now Pesach. What do you call? We're heading off to shul. You can't find chametz. But there's another passage that says, Ach, b'yoyim harishin. But on the first day, tashbisu sa'ar mibodeichem. You shall eliminate sa'ar, the leaven bread, the chametz in your homes, which means on the first day. That means on the first day, there could be chametz in your home. And on that first day, that's when you destroy it, which means that there is now a contradiction between that Pasuk and that Pasuk. So, Ha'ketzad, what are we talking about? Le'rabos arba also le'bir. The second Pasuk says, Ach b'yoy marishon. The words b'yoy marishon, but on the first day are not referring to the first day of Pesach, it's referring to the day before Pesach, Erev Pesach. Obviously, you're going to ask me, how does that connotate? Biyom Arishan seems like the first day. The Gemara obviously is going to tackle it. So the Gemara says like this, and okay, you know what? We're going to stop right here. We're right on the bottom. And the reason is because tomorrow we're just going to start again from the two dots because this is one long so gear that keeps going and it keeps flowing it then. So we're going to stop over here and we're going to get tomorrow. We're just going to pick it up real quickly 
from the two tots to two tots before, just so that we could have a flow in the Gemara. Everybody have a wonderful you day.